Okay, everyone, let's try this, see if the audio is a bit better now. I messed with the settings a little bit. Uh, sorry, I got the notes for lesson two here that you can follow along. If you came to school today to pick up things, or if you're coming to school, they're outside my classroom. Uh, I'm just going to walk through this slowly. Uh, try to make sure you're all following along with this lesson. So, with Newton's first law, the kind of key word and the main thing it's about is inertia. And that's probably a brand new word for most of us. So, inertia, in simplest terms, is the tendency of an object to stay in motion at a constant velocity. And another part about this, right, they resist acceleration. So, they want to keep going at the same speed they're going. And they will continue to do that unless there is some external force applied to them. So, easiest example, if something's at rest, it's not going to start moving. It's going to maintain that constant velocity of zero until something else happens to it. Right? And if something is moving at 10 kilometers, they want to stay going 10 kilometers per hour. And it will do that unless there are external forces like friction air resistance, or some sort of impact. So, inertia, right, is a tendency of an object to stay in motion, and it's directly related to and measured by mass. So, how heavy something is, or an object's mass, is how much matter there is in it, right? We're going to find out pretty quick here that it's different than weight, but uh, the mass that you're used to recording in kilograms or pounds, right, is a measure of matter. And the more matter or the more mass something has, the more it's going to resist acceleration. And this should be pretty obvious if you just consider, right, somebody throwing uh, a wad of paper at you, let's say it's moving at 10 meters per second, versus a giant semi-truck hitting you at 10 meters per second. One of those has a lot more inertia, a lot more tendency to stay in motion, chances are you won't even slow down that giant semi-truck at all, whereas that wad of paper is just going to bounce off you and completely change its motion and its velocity. So the heavier something is, the more mass it has, the more inertia it has, which means it will resist any change in its velocity or any acceleration, right, to a greater extent. So keeping this in mind, that's kind of Newton's first law, uh, inertia in a nutshell. We're going to look at uh, how this relates to our uh, calculations and our problems. So whenever something is moving at a constant velocity, right, these are our constant motion, uniform motion types of uh, kinematics where we have no acceleration. So these are the problems where we're only able to use our speed or our velocity is equal to displacement over time. So uh, when we have constant velocity, uniform motion, zero acceleration, those all mean the same thing, then we know that all of the forces on that object must be balanced. It's not accelerating, and acceleration is directly tied to the net force on an object. So if you ever hear in a question or read in a question that something is traveling at a constant speed, we know that the net force acting on that object is zero. If there's no acceleration, there's no net force. So let's work on example one together. We have this car. I'm going to draw it out. This unit is great for letting the creativity flow. So I have a car. I know that the net forces acting on it are going to be zero. So in my reference system, right, this car can only move forward or backward. It's not going to jump up or down. So this is an example of one dimensional. So forward, positive, back is negative. So we know that it's traveling at a constant speed. It experiences three horizontal forces. 
a forward force, so that would be positive, of one point, or sorry, 11 kilonewtons, and a friction force, so resisting, that should be directed backwards, right? If anything's resisting this forward motion, it must be going opposite, backwards, and that is three kilonewtons. And a third force, which is air resistance. So again, resisting the motion, air resistance, we're looking for this third force, force of AR air resistance. Okay, so I have my diagram. I know that it's traveling at a constant speed. So I know my net force is zero. F net equals zero because acceleration is zero. So my net force here is made up of all three of those forces, keeping their signs uh, sorted out. So we have a positive 11 kilonewtons plus a negative 3 kilonewton plus our negative air resistance, unknown. So F net is zero. I'm looking for FAR. So I'm going to just replace that with a zero, right? And I'm going to add my air resistance over to the other side because that's the unknown I'm looking for, right? And it's a negative. To get rid of that negative, I'm going to add it to both sides. We have, right, zero plus FAR on the left side, and we still have positive 11, negative 3. And a lot of us will just be able to do this question in our heads, right, 11 minus 3. Even just by looking at that, you should uh, realize pretty quickly that we need an 8 in the other direction to add equal and opposite forces. So our air resistance, negative 8 kilonewtons, right, or with proper significant digits and our direction attached, we have 8.0, two significant digits, because our 3 was given to two significant digits, and this will be backwards. All right. That's our first example. There is another method in the solutions uh, where it's using balanced forces, right? So if we know that everything going forward has to equal everything going backward, it's essentially the same steps, right? Just with a different uh, layout to it. So if you want to use that method instead, it would just be method two. We're gonna sum forward. And we know that has to be equal to sum of backwards. So we've got our 11 has to equal our 3 plus our AR, right? So solving for this, we get the same answer. Okay, that was our first example. Next, we're moving on to our equilibrium. So... If we know that something right, is in a state of equilibrium, which means that it's not moving at all, right? it's at rest, and it needs to stay at rest, we know that everything acting on it, all of the forces in every direction, have to be zero, the sum of all those forces. All right, so when an object's at rest, it remains at rest. We say it's at static equilibrium. There's a first year engineering course that is all on static equilibrium. A common calculation that is made in these situations is to determine the equilibrium. So that is our force that will make sure that we really are at equilibrium. So when you see that word equilibrium, we're looking for uh, our final force that brings everything out to a nice 
net force of zero. So in many ways, we were looking uh, at questions like this in terms of displacement, right? On the exam, there was a question asking for uh, the last leg of a hike that would result in zero displacement. Here we're doing almost the same thing, but we're looking for zero force. So we need to have the equal and opposite force to what is already given. So, example one, one D situation. We have two forces acting in the same plane, right? But they're not equal. So we have to find our equilibrium that results in the net force being zero. So F1 was 400 to the left, F2 was 100 to the right. So we're looking for our third force, our equilibrium, so that it's all balanced out. So right now, our net force would be 300 to the left. So in order to make that zero, we're gonna have to add 300 to the right. So if you want to actually break this up into a net force equation, it'll look like this. We have, right, left is negative, right is positive. We have negative 400 plus 100 and plus our third force, right, where we want this to equal zero. So we're going to add 400 and subtract 100 to get 300 by F3 by itself, our third force. So the 400 minus the 100 go onto this side, right? Or on the opposite side of our equilibrium, we have 400 minus 100. So the algebra here is actually a little harder than just reading from our diagram, right? Think of it like a balance scale, right? Or an equation. We want both sides of it to be the same, to be equal. In order to get both sides of this the same, we're obviously going to have to add 300 newtons to this force here. So drawing that on, we would have 300 newtons as our F3. So F3 is equal to 300 newtons. Now that would be our equilibrium. Equilibrium that results in F net, our resultant or our total force acting on the box of zero. Okay, so that's our first one, one-dimensional. Those are always the easiest. 2D doesn't have to be that hard, right? We've done a lot of it already. So in this second example, it's actually going at 90 degrees. So we're gonna avoid one of the harder steps. We have 30 to the left, we'll say that's negative, and we'll add that up as positive, down as negative, and we have 50 down. So our third force is going to have to have an X and a Y component on it, right? Such that we're canceling out the 30 left. So we'll need 30 right and 50 up, right? So those will cancel out. Again, we could take out our vector addition arrows, right? And this becomes another arrow problem. So we can have 50 down, we'll need to have 50 up to cancel it, right? And we'll have 30 left, we'll need 30 right to cancel it. So the arrows are still a main uh, or a good resource to use for this unit as well. Okay, so our 
resultant force, I'm just going to draw it here. We have 30, we have 50, and our resultant will be our equilibrium, right? So if we're only allowed to add one force, which is what the question is asking for, we're looking for F3 as an equilibrium, right? We're going to have to do our special triangle here, find our resultant with 50 up and 30 down. So we can use Pythagoras, 50 squared plus 30 squared, and it'll come out. Oh. I need to calculate this one. Square root of 50 squared plus 30 squared. We get 58.3 newtons. And an angle that's going to be above the horizontal, or you could say north of east, using our tangent function. Opposite is 50, as I drew it, and adjacent is 30. And the angle, therefore, is 59 degrees. And that would be north of east. Or above horizontal. Right, so that is our equilibrium, which is equal to 58.3 newtons, and it's 59 degrees above the horizontal. And our last one, we have two Ds, right? We have two of them, so we're going to have to break them into their components, which is already done for us. It won't always be done for you, but in this case, we get lucky, right? We have F1, which has a horizontal component of 40 to the left, which is going to be negative, and 50 up. That's F1, and F2 was 70 to the right, and 30 up. Okay, so we're not going to worry about angles here, we're just going to add the components. So our x components, we have negative 40 plus 70 is equal to a, a total of positive 30, right? So that's the uh, resultant x component, positive 30, but we want to get that to zero, right? Our equilibrium has to bring this number to zero, right? So our actual equilibrium is going to be opposite of this, right? We're not looking for the resulting force on the box. We're looking for the third force that will uh, bring all three forces to combined or our net force to zero. So we know this is actually going to be our equilibrium of negative 30. Right? So it'll look like that. And our y component is going to have two positives. Positive 50 plus 30 is equal to positive 80. So we know, right, these two are acting with a force of 80 up. If we want the net force on our box to be zero so that it's not accelerating, it's still at rest we need negative 80 newtons in our y direction, which is down. So we have 30 here, 80 here. I'll draw that just clearer for you here. We have 80 down, 30 across. And that's our equilibrium F3. So the total horizontal forces are balanced, right? We have 40 to the left, 70 to the right, 30 to the left. So when we add up right, all of those, we end up with zero. And 
in our vertical, positive 50 plus 30 minus 80, we also get zero, right? So the net force is equal to zero. All right, that is a wrap for today. Hopefully you can hear me okay and read my writing okay. Let me know if you have any questions with the homework. I'll try to get back to you.